Charles in Brisbane, Australia writes, Paul, I hope you can help me with my understanding of DSP, digital signal processing. DSP is a second step of A to D and then back to D to A. Is this before your expensive primary DAC or is this after your expensive DAC? If it's not after, then I see no point. Uh, if it is after, then I see no point in paying a lot of money for your primary DAC e.g. Uh, DirectStream uh, Mark II from PS Audio. And all I see here is a lot of extra electronic processing, which in my experience always degrades the sound, noting, of course, the advantages in the bass. Okay, well, yeah. DSP, if so digital signal processing, which typically happens in an active loudspeaker that happens after your expensive DAC. So there's a couple of ways to look at this. And let's start with the notion that if you took your question to its logical extreme and said, well, there's no sense in buying a great DAC if you're going to then run it through DSP, then you're going to add a mediocre DAC because that's going to make everything a lot worse. So I don't think that's a it's, a, it's a great argument, but I don't think it holds any water. So you need to have from your source gear to your connecting cables to every part of the chain as good as it can get before you put it into your loudspeakers. That's just common sense. That's just the way it is. If you want a high-end audio system that's going to give you goosebumps and put the hair on the back of your neck up when you crank that sucker up and listen to it, this has got to be good stuff. This has got to be right. So with that out of the way, you're not wrong in that if you then put it through another A to D converter, analog to digital converter, futz around with it, <laughs> run it back through a D to A converter, so that you can then have analog to a power amp that plays in the speaker. Yeah, that's a lot of extra stuff and not something that I'm terribly fond of because your chain now is, let's say your source, streaming, CD, whatever. You go to a D to A converter of the best quality that you possibly can. Now you have a perfect analog signal and you're gonna take that and you're gonna re-digitize it futz around with it in DSP, and then put it back into analog. Boom, 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 boom. Yeah, not the best solution. However, in engineering and in audiophile everything, life is a series of compromises. And what we try and do is figure out a way to get the best result out of the available technology. So. The question is, will your passive loudspeaker sound as good or better than an active loudspeaker? Okay, because that's basically what we're talking about. I don't know of many or any reasonable active loudspeakers that don't take advantage of DSP as opposed to just being an amplifier playing into a passive crossover of a speaker. So. If you're making the choice of an active loudspeaker versus your power amplifier and your passive loudspeaker combo, that's where the decision comes down. So don't focus so much on the little details of that active speaker and the DSP in it, because you're right, there's a lot of extra stuff. What's the end result? Is this better than that? And that's what you have to figure out. I think in most cases, you're going to be better off not going the active route. The active route can have better aspects. We have more control over the speaker and you might get a better this or that, but overall, I think you're gonna be better off going with your traditional analog power amplifier and passive loudspeakers. So, stuff to think about. All right, hope that helps.